Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Garland's Tumblers here today, and I'm gonna go over a cup that you guys have been asking for. It's the Pray With Me, Don't Play With Me cup. Now, the main steps in this cup are pretty basic, that it's just glittered and decaled, so I'm gonna take this charm to go more in depth in a few of the steps. Like I use chunky glitter on the cup, so how do I seal that? How do I sand that? Just a few little tips that may be helpful when you're using chunky glitter on a cup. And then also, I use Inkscape to create an offset of the main decal on the cup. So I'm gonna walk through those steps with you guys. And then, of course, I have to use the two-tone leopard file. So I'm actually gonna use part regular vinyl on this cup and part textured. So I'll walk through that and then how I hand lay the leopard spots on the cup. So anything that I'm not clear on or you guys have questions about, feel free to ask me. You know, I'm here to help. And I hope you guys enjoy it and thank y'all for watching. So I'm starting with a sanded and spray painted cup. I just spray painted it matte white with Rust-Oleum 2X spray paint. And I've mixed up two milliliters of epoxy and I've applied that and I've let it sit for about five minutes. And then I'm using the Knot from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is a beautiful silver and white mix. It's one of those colors that I pulled out to blend something one time and I was like, oh my goodness, I do not use this enough. So I thought it would be the perfect base for this decal that I was gonna put on here. The, this was a, originally a custom request and they wanted a silver blingy base. So I went to this one immediately. So I've just applied a very thick coat here. I'm knocking off any excess. And then I'm gonna take my paper here, my parchment paper, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the cup because this is a really chunky glitter. And if I don't lay it down now, I'm gonna regret it about two coats of epoxy in when I cannot sand it to get it flat. So I've learned to save, um, save myself on the front end by pressing this glitter down. I'm just gonna, so I've wrapped the parchment paper around the cup to make sure it's all laying flat. And then I'm actually gonna go back around the rim too and just knock off any, I'm gonna go back and sand this rim anyway, but I wanna get off any glitter that's hanging off the edge just so it doesn't make my job a little bit harder when I go to clean off the rim and sand. And then I'm just gonna go back over any little stray pieces of glitter that are sticking up and press them down and try not to knock them off. And then I let this coat dry for about eight hours and I'm gonna move it to the turner. And then I'm gonna apply a coat of CC DIY's Quick Coat. As a sealer for chunky glitter, this stuff is so good. It cuts down on a layer for me of epoxy when I use this on the top of a chunky glitter. So I love it, I'm gonna apply that. And then I'm gonna let that dry for about 30 to 45 minutes. And now I've mixed up about 20 milliliters of epoxy and I'm gonna apply that coat. Then I'm gonna let that coat dry for about four to six hours and go immediately into a second coat of another 20 milliliters of epoxy. Then I'm gonna use my torch just to pop any bubbles. And then I'm gonna let this layer dry overnight, usually like eight to 10 hours before I'm going into sanding. And so I've got my 80 grit sanding block and I'm gonna go around the rim to create a thin rim around the top where my next layer of epoxy can adhere to. And then just knock off any shards that are sticking out on the bottom. And then I also, with this chunky glitter, I like to use, this is a 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Um, it's just a 3M, I got it at Home Depot, I think. And it seems to work better for me on a chunky glitter. To, it seems to smooth it out a little better than my sanding block does. So I'm just gonna go around the cup and knock off any you know rough places to get ready for my decals. So I'm gonna walk through Inkscape and I basically just open this file and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select all in all layers. So sometimes you can just click on it, but I like to double check. So at the top, I go to the edit tab and just do select and select all in all layers. And then I'm gonna to go to path and trace bitmap. And this little box is gonna pop up and I'm gonna change the brightness threshold to 0 0.9. And then I'm gonna click on the multiple scans tab and hit uh, check the remove background, hit update. And once I see it in the little box, I'm gonna hit okay and then just X out of that. So I know that it's done what it's supposed to do when it shows up in that little box. And then I'm gonna to go to object and ungroup once I make sure it's selected, and then I'm gonna to go to path, well, I'm going to object first, and <laughs> ungroup, scroll down to ungroup, and then I go to path, and then scroll down to union. And you're gonna see that it creates a layer, so I'm gonna click on the top layer and slide it over, and then take the bottom layer and delete it and then take the top layer and slide it back over where it's all of it's inside my square. And 
and then I'm going to go up to path and scroll down to linked offset is what I use and then you're going to see it puts a little triangle at the top um, and you can see now here there's an outline so there's a little triangle at the top you're not actually going to be able to see it on my computer but I know that it's processing so I just take my cursor put it on the little triangle pull it up and then just leave it because I know my computer runs really slow so it's going to take a minute to actually pop my offset up And there you see my offset now. It just takes it a minute for mine to process. Then I'm gonna go up to File, and I'm gonna select Save as an SVG, and then you can save it to your desktop, if you have a folder, wherever you save all your files, before you're gonna import it into, uh, I use Cricut Design Space. And then I was just going to show you that you can go click on it and it'll show you where your offset actually is. You can see if it's wide enough or you want it smaller, you can go back and adjust it. Um, and then I brought it into Design Space and there's an extra layer here. So I'm going to go in and ungroup and delete that one out and then layer them back up just to make sure that they're correct size. And then we're ready to print. And on this 20 ounce skinny original, I do use about a four inch wide decal. And then on my leopard spots, I use an eight by eight. So I've just printed those off. Um, I'm just layering them up now. I do use this gold textured linen vinyl that I had been waiting to use and I thought this would be the perfect cup to do it on. But I didn't want to use textured vinyl for all the leopard spots. So I do use this luster gold vinyl for half of them and the textured linen for the other half. And I didn't want to have to cut two sheets of the insides of the leopard spots. So I ended up just cutting you know, half luster and half textured vinyl and just laying them side by side on my mat. So the file cut half on one vinyl and half on the other vinyl so I didn't waste it doing two full sheets of vinyl. And then I'm just placing the decal on here, nothing fancy. Um, this texture vinyl is pretty easy to work with. Sometimes the glossy black doesn't want to stick to it, so I just try to be careful when I'm removing my transfer tape to make sure that my black is sticking pretty good to that textured vinyl. And then this probably makes a little bit more sense. You can see I've just laid my squares next to each other on the, the mat when I print it, when I cut them out. And then um, I have found that a lot of these files, when I'm laying the top spots on the bottom spots, they get a little too close together. So I just prefer to do them by hand. And especially on this one where I wanted to mix them up, I wanted, you know, I didn't want a lot of, of the luster gold spots next to each other and the metallic, you know, textured ones next to each other. So. I wanted to kind of mix them up and then I usually just try to start and make sure I fill in around my main decal work my way to the top and the bottom and then just around to the back of the cup and I've just tried to mix it up here like I may have one luster gold and then one metallic gold so I've tried to mix them up a little bit here where they're not a whole line of you know or section of the same uh, gold so you may notice here there's a little TL written at the top. I have learned because I get my leopard spots all kind of crazy ways when I'm, especially if I'm taking the the top ones and layering them over the bottom spots to label them top right and top left. And then I take my black sheet and I label it top right here. So I know that that's the way the pattern goes. And I will link both these gold vinyls in the description box below. So you guys make sure to check that out if you're looking for either one of these vinyls and haven't been able to find them. And then, of course, y'all know I have to add the little spots to the bottom, just as the little finishing touch. So after we're done laying their leopard spots, I'm ready to go right into my next coat of epoxy, and I'm going to apply about 20 milliliters of epoxy on this coat. I'm going to let that dry for about four to six hours, and then I'm just going to go right into my final layer, another 20 milliliters of epoxy. And then when this coat dries, we're done. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll link all the products that I use in the description box below. So make sure you check that for all the items that I used. And as always, ask any questions, anything I can clarify. I appreciate you guys watching. Go follow, like, share, subscribe, all that fun, crazy stuff. Find us on social media. Make sure you hit the bell button to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to y'all soon.